Hi. What I have here on the bench today is an Array 3711A electronic load. For those who have been following my channel, you know that I have built quite a few electronic loads over the years, from a small simple electronic load that fits in the hard drive cooler case and can handle roughly 50 watts of power dissipation and a maximum of 10 amps load current to a more capable load that can handle up to 200 watts of power dissipation with a maximum load current of 15 amps, and finally to a really beefy electronic load with a peak power dissipation of more than 1 kilowatts and a maximum load current of over 100 amps. These electronic loads that I built have been working very well over the years, and you have seen me using some of those in many of my past videos. But of course, this Array 3711A is a piece of professional test equipment and thus offers much precise settings and readbacks than my homemade ones. So I'm pretty excited to get this one from eBay at a reasonable price. Now, this particular model is capable of handling loads up to 300 watts with a maximum current of 30 amps and a maximum voltage of 300 volts. There is also a 3710A version, and the difference is the maximum load, which comes in at 150 watts. And I would assume that the internal circuitry is largely the same as the 300 watts 3711A, and the main difference would be the number of power MOSFETs and the control firmware. Interestingly, the same design can also be found in a few other brands, such as the TechPower TP3710A, 3711A, and even the Gossam Metrowatt 32EL series. So what I thought I would do is to do a teardown in this video and take a look at its operations in a future video. This way the videos would be self-contained and also would not be too long. So let's get started. So let's first take a look at the specifications here. And I have the printouts here basically having the 3710A and the 3711A side by side. And as you can see, the only difference seems to be the input power for the 3710A is 0 to 150 watts, whereas the 3711A, the maximum dissipation is 300 watts. Everything else looks pretty much identical. Now, if you look at the voltage accuracy here from 0 to 3.999 volts, the accuracy is 0.2% plus 3 millivolts. So this suggests that uh, the unit is using at least a 10-bit DAC because we have 10,024 uh, sp steps that gives you roughly 3 millivolts here. And you can see that the next range is 30 millivolts because we have uh, uh, the range is 10 times larger and 300 millivolts for the even higher voltage range. So the same goes for the current accuracy as well. Of course, besides uh, the, your general load capabilities, you also have uh, some protection over voltage, over current, over power, and over temperature. And interestingly, you also have this uh, polarity reversion detection, which is very good. So we can probably test it out later when we uh, do a testing video. So that's pretty much uh, all there is on the spec side. And one of the benefits of getting one of these electronic loads is that uh, circuit diagrams are readily available. So what I have printed out uh, here are the circuit diagram for this electronic load. And as you can see, it's not that uh, complicated, but uh, the brain of this uh, electronic load is a MSP430 F135. So that's a MSP series a TI's uh, microcontroller. And then we have a bunch of uh, op amps. So we will take a look at the detail when we open this unit up. And let's take a quick look at the panel here. We have this uh, physical power switch here. And then we have this keyboard, which is uh, serves as a numeric input and also your functions. And then we have this uh, rotary encoder, which is used to uh, conveniently input your voltage and the current settings. And then we have this two big binding post for connecting to the external loads. So that's the front. And Let me turn this over. We can take a look at the back. 
So as you can see, we have this uh, RS-232 port, which is used to connect to a computer, and uh, you can use a remote control to control this uh, electronic load. Of course, and also the, uh, the control protocol is uh, readily available, so you can write your own programs if you choose so. And uh, the first thing I notice is actually how clean this unit is. If you recall my teardown video of the Agilent 6632312A, uh, the uh, the power supply, you saw that how dirty that was. But this one, even though it's a eBay auction item, it's uh, really clean. In fact, if you look at the bottom, we also have two more fans at the bottom, and you can see it. Uh, looks like either somebody cleaned it or it just have not been used that much and uh, and I don't think that it's been cleaned because you still have this uh, seal uh, for the uh, calibration seal here of course we're gonna avoid that and we will open it up so let me open it up and we'll take a look at what is inside and with this four screws removed at the back I can I think I can lift this uh, top cover open. Yep, and uh, we can see what is on the top side. Now you can see the inside. Now the first thing you notice is how compact everything is. Now of course I probably have to take it uh, apart further because we can't see any of these two uh, power modules. But nevertheless we can kind of take a peek right now before I take it apart further that uh, what is underneath in the, on this board. I think we need to take it down a little further so we can see it more clearly. Okay, so this is not the easiest to take apart. After a lot of screws, and I can show you here, I finally managed to open it up. And now we have the face panel removed and also the side panels removed so we can see the internal a little bit more clearly. So now let's take a look at the circuit inside here and we have uh, two main boards. One board is at the bottom of the chassis here which is the analog portion of the board. Uh, this board connects to the front panel which houses the digital portion of the board. Here you can see that the power transformer's output comes into the board and get uh, rectified and then filtered and then goes into this uh, 7812 and 7912 linear regulators. These two provide the plus minus 12 volts that needed by all the op amps here. And then another uh, rectified voltage comes in into this uh, 7805 linear regulator which provides the 5 volts regulate regulated voltage. So we can see that clearly here on the circuit diagram. And let's just make it in focus. And we can see that the three regulators here, the plus minus 12 and the plus 5 volts. And then towards the center here we can see quite a few OP07s. These are op amps that are used to form a negative feedback to uh, sense the current flowing through the sensing resistor and also drive the output MOSFETs. And here we have a few relays which are used to switch on and off the output channel. Now notice that the relays are actually not rated for handling a significant uh, amount of current and that's because the relays are not actually switching the loads directly. The loads are actually switched via this uh, parallel uh, MOSFETs right here. And we can see this arrangement from the circuit diagram right here. So let me keep it in focus here. And as you can see, we have these uh, parallel MOSFETs here. These are the ones that we saw earlier uh, on, at the bottom of the board right here. And these are the ones basically to switch on and off the loads. And because these MOSFETs can handle a very significant amount of current, so that's why they are used as switches, whereas the relays are simply just used to turn on and off these MOSFETs. And also we can see quite a few of these uh, 0.1 ohm wire wound resistors used for current sensing. 
And uh, towards the bottom here, you can see how the binding posts are connected to the main board via these two metal pieces. And because of the traces need to handle up to 30 amps of a continuous current, you can see that not only that we have huge uh, tinned traces, but also the traces, if you look carefully, they are via stitched. And uh, in fact, these traces are paralleled with the traces at the back. So if I just uh, tip it, and you will see that, um, I'm not sure if you can see this, let's do it like that. You can see that also this is where the via dish through. So this trace is parallel with uh, this trace, provide the current required for this electronic load. And up here we have the two power modules. Each power module has four MOSFETs here, and they're mounted uh, actually directly onto the heat sink, and so they're bent backwards onto the board here. And I'm not going to take these MOSFETs off because under the board there really isn't too much, which I will just uh, mention briefly what is on the other side of the board. And also after you take off the MOSFETs, you have to reapply the uh, heat sink compounds, which is quite a hassle. Towards the center here, we have these uh, thermal cutoffs mounted directly onto the heat sink. They are here to prevent uh, the power devices from overheating. In the event that the uh, heat sink exceeds certain temperatures, they will trigger and uh, cut off the power dissipation into these MOSFETs. So if you take a look at the circuit diagram we have here, and uh, each module would match what we have in this rectangle here, these are our MOSFETs and uh, the driver circuitry. So the uh, device back here, these two would be your TL084 uh, quad op amps. One thing interesting are these uh, traces, and these are actually connected to the current sensing resistors uh, underneath the board. And I suspect the reason for these uh, specific curved traces are to match the impedance exactly amongst all the MOSFETs here. Another thing to notice is that uh, the size of the heatsink is actually not that big. And uh, just for comparison purpose, each channel the heatsink used is roughly the same size as the server-grade CPU heatsink here. And so this one, as you can see, it's pretty much the same size. Which means that each of these heatsinks is responsible for dissipating at least 100, uh, actually up to 150 watts of heat. The use of these uh, smaller heat sinks is made possible by the efficient airflow design in this chassis. And as you can see here, we have four fans uh, in acting together to create the optimal airflow. And the two fans at the bottom basically sucks in air and then the air is blown out from the rear. Now that's pretty much everything in the analog section of the circuit. So now let's take a look at the digital section. And here on the front panel is where all the digital circuitry is located. Towards the left here we have this uh, rotary encoder, and then we have some 74 series logic chips to handle the logic here. And uh, the display here is actually a standard 16 by 2 uh, character LCD. And towards the bottom here, we can see this is our main microcontroller, and which is a MSP430F135. And towards the left here, that's the programming header that is uh, used to program the MCU. And that's pretty much everything inside this Array 3711A electronic load. Now it's time for me to put everything back together. Okay, so now everything is put back together, and uh, let's quickly check it out to make sure it still works. For that, I have hooked up this load to a 5 volt uh, LED power supply, and uh, let's power it down and take a look. And uh, it's a good sign that we're showing 5 volts. So now let's set the current to 1 amp, and uh, let's go. Let's turn on the load. And it seems that everything is still working okay. 
So that pretty much concludes this uh, teardown and I hope you enjoy the video. If you learned something new, like the video, please give it a big thumbs up and remember to subscribe, share and I will catch up the next time.